Need fast, cheap, reliable MUD coins? Go to MMOXP.com for the cheapest coins on the market. And use discount code MONEYSHOT for an additional 5% off your next order. Link in the description below. <laughs> Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniffing out the Madden cheese as always. Got a tip video for you today. I haven't put out a tip video in a while. Got some weekend leagues, some mutt games here. And I'm going to tell you guys uh, some tips on how to win games. How to play Madden. How to play Madden better. How to play offense, defense, all that stuff better. I'm going to be breaking it down in this particular gameplay. Uh, I'm in weekend league right now. I mean, most of the gameplays that I'm putting out at this point are weekend league because basically that's where the best competition is. Before I do, though, if you guys are trying to get some last minute coins for the Blitz demo that just dropped, make sure to check out my coin sponsor link in the description below and use my discount code money shot to get five percent off other than that i know i've been saving up coins for this uh blitz promo i got about a million and a half i'm looking to get cam chancellor and tyree kill the top two cards so expect to see tyree kill and terry mclaurin in my upcoming gameplays and as far as my playbooks go i'm using today the green Bay packers as always and kansas state chiefs defense as always so other than that's going to skip right into the video so starting off on defense, the first most important thing to do every single game is to set your substitutions when it comes to the players on your defense. I probably have to sub out about half my defense, if not more. If you watch the Madden tournaments, the players have a gentleman's agreement where they essentially let the delay of game clock happen several times so they can set up their adjustments for the entire game. That's how important it is. But this isn't that situation, so I gotta hurry. As you can see, it's so important that I won't even run a single play until I get all my substitutions in. That's how important this is, and it amazes me how many people skip over this step entirely and basically just run their defense stock based off of what Madden puts in for you. Now, I run my own variation out of the meta uh, Big Nickel over G. Uh, I run four safeties. A lot of pro players are doing that. Basically, you got two safeties at the safety spots, two safeties at the linebacker spots. It really depends on how you want to put your safeties in what spots. I typically have my highest man coverage safeties at the linebacker spots because they're going to be in man coverage a lot. Then I typically have my outside linebackers at the defensive ends and my defensive ends at the defensive tackles. That's pretty much how majority of people are running this to have the most dominant defense possible. As you can see, I'm still setting it up and I'm running out of clock the second time around because you have to make these adjustments. I barely get this play call off. I'm not going to go over the setup of this defense. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to check this out. But ultimately today I'm going over tips. So one of the first tips is going to be you always want to mix man and zone. You can't really run one because because each individual coverage will get beat on their own. But if you mix them together, especially in plays, you're going to have a lot more success. Now, this first play, I make a little bit of a mistake. I get suctioned in Up. to a pass rush animation. Don't use your pass rush with linemen. That's something that they tried to make better in this year's game, but it's still not the way that you win games. You might be able to get a few sacks here and there, but you're never going to be able to control the game the way that you do in coverage. That's how games are won. Games are won and lost in coverage. You can see right here, there's really only one receiver that gets open. If I was in coverage i could have easily took that away and there would have been nothing open but like i said i get sucked into an animation the next thing i'm going to do when i get back to the play call screen so i have time is i'm going to set my audible plays because you ultimately want to mix your plays together so one of the first things i'm going to do if i would have had time on the first series is i would have put in cover four quarters cover six uh cover two cover three i have a nice blend a nice mixture you want to have a good selection of plays so that you can ultimately you know flip them around and try to confuse your opponent you can't run the same defense over and over and over it's eventually going to get you in trouble so now that i have all my best plays i can also pick a fifth play if i choose a play that's different than the four plays that you see right here so i'm going to come out to cover six because the first two plays or the first play rather i was in a man coverage and you got to mix up your coverages you can't come out in the same thing over and over and over uh, this almost looks like a base uh man coverage from the look of it so that's going to confuse him but if you mix up your coverages between mans and zones even though mans in my opinion are probably better there are some good zones out there but if you mix them up it's going to make your opponent to make mistakes right here he has openings he has the flat he eventually beats me with a playmaker route but you're not going to make a living with that that's something that you can do but you're not going to win games doing that consistently so i can live with that mistake on the next play i'm right back to my base defense i'm probably in my base defense 70 percent of the game and that's really about a percentage that you probably want to go to find a really good defense that works for you and stick with that now on the next play he makes an adjustment he motions across uh, the tight end here and i didn't get enough time to motion across my linebacker to stick with him 
But you always want to try to do that. You always want to take away pre-snap space, whether you man a line or just move guys across. I didn't have time to do that. It was kind of last second. I tried to, to make up for it uh, with my user, but obviously the route was nowhere near me. So now he's in the red zone. He's going to pass again because he's been having a lot of success. Against the pass, you want to make sure you play max coverage. Blitzes don't really do too much this year. Um, there, there are some good blitzes, but ultimately max coverage zones is the way to go. Uh, or max coverage man, which I started off the game with pretty much. And you can see there's nothing really open here he drops back everything's covered so he tries to step up and run for it. this is a scenario where i could easily try to come down and take out this quarterback but like i said always stay in coverage even in this scenario so i'm going to hit the r3 button send the computer defender to take care of that never leave coverage never unless you are the only defender and that's your only option so now that that blew up in his face i'm kind of thinking he's probably going to try to run the ball so i'm looking through my 4-3 normal my larger packages and then sure enough i see he comes out in a three wide receiver set the second he does that i go right to a three wide receiver defense always match or you're going to get mismatch that's the bottom line if i come out in something where i'm not matching he'll either have a receiver roasting a linebacker or it's always gonna end up bad for me which is why you never want to pick your defense first i just wait until i see what he's in he's in a three wide receiver set i match that always let your opponent pick the defense first that's going to be the difference in a lot of times between winning situations and losing situations now i'm in a third and goal he's in a three wide receiver set we're running that max zone one more time and sure enough he forces it gotcha, and he gets picked off in the end zone so it really doesn't matter that he went the length of the field if he's not smart enough to know when to just take the points i'm sure he would have rather have that throw back and rather have uh the field position three points all that stuff just went right out the window on that throw so once i get on the offensive side i'm going to repeat the steps from the defensive side they're the same thing i'm going to set my audible plays i'm going to make my substitutions all those things are the same whether you're on offense or defense you can see here the first thing i'm going to do is come out with one of my favorite run formations i'll try to put a link in the description below for this as well uh but ultimately the first play on offense is pretty much i'm always just going to pay a play to see the defense i want to see what my opponent is in because that's going to be their favorite play that's going to be the play they run the most just like it was for me i ran cover two man most of the driving around cover two man most of the play so i'm going to put a cover three beater in my audibles which is the mesh spot i'm going to pick the pa seams though just in case he doesn't run that exact same play uh and sure enough he's in that cover three so i'm going to set my cover three one play touchdown up but you always got to leave yourself an outlet you always have to leave yourself some sort of check down where there's a drag a slant a zig whatever have something in your back pocket just in case the play doesn't work out like you planned uh because ultimately this doesn't look like it's going to work based off where the safety is anyway and you can see right as i start to play he just follows him back so i take the check down once again don't force it so many people force plays that they shouldn't that check down got me 10 12 yards i mean who wouldn't take that all game so on the next play i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna mix it up just like you do on defense once again run and pass don't just come out and just be a pass 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 player or a run 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 player because eventually it's gonna make you easier to figure out so i'm gonna hit him with a nice strong run play based off the fact that he's in something smaller anyway he's in a nickel coverage defense probably similar to mine so i'm gonna hit him with some uh, some mismatch plays i'm gonna basically create my own mismatch i'm gonna come out in some tight end heavy looks and just try to just jam it down his throat try to either force him out of that defense or force him to do something like run commit which will also set him up uh in my in my favor so the next play doesn't work out the same way as the first play did we're still third and inches but i'm gonna double down i'm gonna come out in a three tight end set and i'm gonna basically i'm just calling plays to move the chains at the end of the day that's the most important thing other than the score since the score is zero zero down in distance keeping possession of the ball that's the most important thing right now so we're going to set up our audible plays one more time you need different launch angles if you come out to see the defense and there's a huge gap if you don't have a play that takes advantage of that gap or has a launch angle towards that gap it won't really matter so i choose five different plays one more time i got the o1 trap i plan on using the o1 trap but because of this slow motion tight end going across the field i get a penalty and now i'm going back uh third and five uh, which ultimately he probably would have ran commit and shut that down anyway i didn't even love that play call so that's fine uh next play i set up my cover three one play touchdown one more time this is something where i have multiple routes that I can score this running back should work but sure enough it looks like he's playing sticks and i'm not going to force it once again i take the sack not necessarily the best play but at least i didn't throw an interception lose possession of the ball so fourth and 13 you got to know when to go for it from where i am on the field at the 39 i'm not sure i can hit it i don't have the best kicker so i'm going to go for it this is a situation where you should go for it. there's plenty of situations people go for it when they shouldn't but this is definitely Definitely a good one so going for it from inside the 40 as soon as the play starts i mean that a route looks promising but it only works if you make the right throw and the right catch so i got a bullet pass lead outside and make sure i safe catch that bad boy so it doesn't get knocked out if you're not doing those things on every single pass that you complete you're, you're doing yourself a disservice so in the red zone now we're going to pound the rock running the ball in the red zone is definitely the way to go i would say passing just about everywhere else but once you get inside the 20 you really got to pound that ball and everybody knows that because he definitely run commits on this next play when 
when you see safeties and cornerbacks run in to play the run like that, it's definitely a run commit. So you got to remember tendencies, and you have to basically build your plays off of those tendencies. So I come out in RPO expecting to hit the slant all the way, expecting another run commit based off of that tendency and based off of what I've been noticing. And sure enough, we get a wide open touchdown. I use that play so many times in short yard situations, especially goal line. It's so money. Uh, the stretch play is hardly even part of it. So back on the defensive side, he's going to give me some dink and dunk stuff, move down the field pretty quickly, just like he did the first drive. But at the end of the day, the only thing that matters to me is keeping him out of the end zone. So I play my defense to keep him from scoring big touchdowns, long plays. Uh, I don't want him to score any any home runs because that's really the point of the game. If, if, I, if I can keep you within field goals and I'm scoring touchdowns, that's how you win games. So he's moving the ball pretty easily down the field right here. I really thought I could have had that tackle, but yeah. I guess uh, I guess Saquon Barkley's a beast. Uh, and like I said, he's moving. For the most part, though, eventually my defensive scheme will win the day because, like I said, it's really meant to keep him out of the end zone. And the closer that he gets to the end zone, the harder it gets. As you can see right now, he's not really having any success uh, because the deep stuff's not really there anymore. So now I can focus more on the short stuff. Nope. Uh, which isn't necessarily the game plan, but you can see how it's working out. So third and 10, he hasn't really completed a pass in a while. Um, I almost undercut that. I mean, he's been using the running back a lot. He tries to hurry me up and try to get uh, an easy fourth and one against that defense, but I'm not going to play that game. So I call a timeout. This is one of the few exceptions where I don't care what he's in on offense i'm going to pick a run defense because i'm not going to give him an easy fourth and one down a distance is king so there are times where i don't pay attention to that when i come to the line i mean he's definitely in something where he could beat me easily in a pass play um, so i kind of space it out and make it look like i'm in a zone coverage i'm just going to try to give him a little misdirection sure enough i mean i have my defense set up enough that i could probably stop the run but i'm not going to run commit i'm not going to shoot for that and he throws a super fast gotcha, i think he probably thought i was run committing based off of the fact that how quickly got that ball out and sure enough you know like i said don't force it but it was fourth and one so i guess he kind of had to on the offensive side now uh we're going to play as the score dictates we're going to take it nice and easy we're just going to hit him with a couple of run plays there's only 33 seconds left uh, i don't really need to force anything i don't need to give him the ball back right here i'm up seven nothing i have to play like i'm up seven nothing and sure enough the first two plays though they work out a little bit better than i was expecting so the first play there get about a 10 yard first down second play hit him with a power g one more time get about a 15 yard first down now I'm thinking I might be able to get some points out of this. So we're going to come out a little bit something more pass heavy. 22 seconds left. I don't have any timeouts. But we're going to take a shot because I'm hoping that if I throw it deep enough, it ultimately acts as a punt if I don't if it doesn't work out. So we have our cover three beater set up. Uh, sure enough, once the play starts, I mean, once again, this A route is looking pretty promising. Uh, but ultimately, I guess I should have waited, held the ball a little yeah. bit longer because I didn't either I didn't make the right throw or I didn't make the right timing and I get picked off. Uh, which, like I said, not a big deal. I mean, I was kind of you know expecting that as a possibility, but but I wish I would have threw it a little bit further down the field because now he's right back in the scoring range. And then on the next play, I came out of cover four quarters and he just like glitches it right up the seam. Damn it! Uh, which not a lot of people know how to do, but he did a good job with that. So now the game is tied. Probably my fault. I probably should have played a little bit more conservatively, but so should he considering that he was pressing everybody and my streaking tight end goes right over the top. Break yourself, fool! So even though we made a mistake and gave up a touchdown, so did he, and the score is right back to what it was. I'm up seven. Then when the second half starts, once again, he's going for it at the wrong time. you got to know when to hold him, and you got to know when to fold him. You don't want to be doing onside kicks and giving me the ball right here. Uh, I mean, that just doesn't make a lot of sense. I see a lot of people doing that in Weekly League, too, as well, which I don't necessarily understand. So I'm starting off with great field position and a touchdown lead. On the next play, it looks like he definitely run commits once again. Like I said, you got to remember those tendencies because they'll come in handy later on. you got to make people pay for that. That. So second and 12, he's been cover three pretty much the entire game. We're going to hit him right up the seam. That's another tendency that we've been taking advantage of. And then once again, it's all about that pass lead and that safe catch. Next play, he's pinching that defense pretty tight. He's been run committing a lot. So remembering that tendency one more time, we got another RPO. And sure enough, the second the play starts, you can see these cornerbacks are just flying in. Leaving this receiver wide open, we get a nice and easy touchdown. So while I feel my opponent was a pretty good player, ultimately the game ended pretty easily as I just followed simple, basic things that really help you win games i hope you guys understood what i was trying to get at if you like what you saw make sure to hit the subscribe button and if you want to see more videos like this make sure to let me know in the comment section hit the like button other than that thanks for watching man my shit out need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bids and more link in the description below